All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna do exactly what the title is about. So we're gonna be talking about the Top Don TB6000 Pro. Uh, I've actually had this thing for maybe six months, actually. Uh, I was gonna do a video on this earlier, but I just didn't find a good place to fit it in anywhere. And I also wanted to try it out uh, long-term before I say if it's good or not. And I've got some good things to say about it. And I got some bad things to say about it. So let's go. If you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I've had quite a lot of issues with batteries in cars, uh, especially during the past, I don't know, four or five years. Constantly dead, doesn't start. Buy a new car, that nah, doesn't start. Buy another car, nah, that doesn't start either. So I've had a lot of issues with batteries. I don't like to spend the money. So it usually takes me a while before I finally give up and go and buy a brand new battery. And this is exactly where I am today. Uh, this battery has given up in my Audi and I just bought this new one. So I thought, what a perfect time to put this little video in here and talk a little bit about the Top Don charger. So this is how it looks like, obviously. Uh, this has gone through quite some wear and tear. I've used it a lot uh, in the past six months. I've definitely got some, gotten some hands-on experience. I haven't tried all the functions in it, but I thought maybe we should go through like the ones I can see and the ones I know about in the app, because that's kind of the special thing about this charger. It is Bluetooth and it is connected to an app on your phone, which gives you a few advantages over like a good old standard battery charger. And before we hook this thing up and start fiddling around with it, I just want to say that these two batteries here have been on charge since, you know, early yesterday. So they are fully charged. I'm not able to get a really full charge on the bad battery here, but good battery, 100%, should be good to go. And we're gonna give these a little bit of a comparison. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. So, if you're like me, you just wanna charge something. You don't wanna fiddle around with Bluetooth connections and whatever. You got a car, it doesn't start, you wanna hook on the battery and you wanna go. Okay, so what do you do? Well, you put the battery charger on, have a quick look here. It's gonna say 12.6 volts. At least it's got some kind of voltage in it. You'll hook it up. Now you gotta select what you want the battery charger to do. Once, like right out of the box, once you just hook it up like this, it's on regular charge. So all you gotta do is press this twice and it'll start charging the battery. It's saying it's 35% full and it's gonna start hitting it with some amperage here soon. Going up 50%, 65, 75, 90, 100%. So now it's saying it's fully charged. 13.3 volts, 100%. Now it's just gonna trickle charge this thing, keep it at 100%. Now I know that this battery is bad. It'll keep the voltage, but it's not gonna crank anything. Anyway, this is how you would, you know, charge up a battery. I don't have a dead battery right now. I think I have a battery that's kind of drained. Yeah, I'm gonna go grab that. Well, I just got the whole car instead. So we want to do some other. Um, yeah, this car's been sitting for a while. Let's put it in frame. And as you all heard, it was a little bit sluggish on the starter. It's a pretty fresh battery, this. It's about a couple of years old. So it should be okay, but it should need a charge. So let's hook this on here and see what it says. Okay, so we got 12.2 volts. Okay, so we got 12 volt norm. We just double click this. Let's see what it does. Okay, so it's saying 25% at the moment, but it kind of needs a little time to settle to kind of find out where it's counting through the charging steps here. So it's going through one through nine, kind of finding out where it is. I'm gonna give that a minute, see what it winds up. All right, so it's showing 4.7 amp of charge right now, 65% state of charge. Uh, we are at charging level number six right now. But yeah, it's charging like any charger would. It kind of works like a normal charger if you would have hooked up any of these old CTEX or something like that. But now comes the interesting part <clears throat> where this thing kind of stands out. But you know, that's, that's how you would use it nine out of 10 times. So now we're connected both to the battery and the mains. We're gonna open up the app, the TB6000 Pro app, which is available through the App Store and Play Store and all that stuff. So we got one for Android and for uh, iPhone users. So when you open it up, it's gonna look like this. Oh yeah, I gotta start screen recording too. Sorry about that. All right, so once you open up the app, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna say disconnected. 
go up here to Bluetooth, Bluetooth. Make sure your Bluetooth is on. Click the TB6000 Pro and it connects. And here you can choose three things, smart charging, quick charging, and testing. Let's go into smart charging. So here you can choose a little bit more specific of what kind of battery you got. Uh, this is a regular flooded battery, battery standard, it's an EN. Let's see what it is. So we got 680. Here you can set the appointment for charging, like when it's gonna start charging, like if you wanna, you know, get the cheapest uh, electricity price on it, but that's just useless. Let's not get into that. Who, no, no one's gonna use that. That's just weird. If this thing pulls such a small current, it's just not gonna be noticeable. Uh, all right, so let's push, push start charging. So it's gonna do a battery pretest, and then we're gonna be able to see it charging here. Also gonna be able to see it up here. And then it says power here, which is, which is wattage. We don't want that. We want current. Who, who wants to see wattage? That, that's weird. Current, anyway. So here we can see, we can get a little graph here. And this is also going to become a report. And anyway, you can pull this out later and see how many amps it pulled over time, etc., etc. But we're going to stop that charging because we don't need... You don't need any, any, any port on that. Uh, quick charging is the next one that we're gonna visit. Here you can also set the appointment, choose the charging mode, and just start charging. And it'll basically do the same thing as the smart charging, but you, you can't really specify the battery and stuff. And this one won't give you any log file. So we'll stop that. And now we get to the interesting bit, which is the testing options. So now we have battery test, charging test, and cranking test. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into these since we got the car in here. Uh, let's hop into the cranking test right away because that seems like the most exciting thing to do with a cold diesel engine that's been sitting for three weeks. Uh, so let's see here, I've never done this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and read this. Uh, auxiliary detection of the battery's health. Test results include starting time and voltage test. Only supports 12 volt lead acid battery tests, which we've got. The clamps must be connected to the battery to perform a test, yes. Connect the red clamp to the battery's positive pole and the black clip to the battery's negative pole. Socket connection is not required for battery charging and cranking test. Okay, so we don't really need, you don't need to have uh, the mains connected. You can, but you don't need it. Okay, next, turn off all electronics. Step two, start vehicle. Confirm. All right, so this tells us that the cranking voltage, like when we're cranking the engine over, is 10.4 volts. And the cranking time before the alternator kicks in is 2.7 seconds, I guess. So that's pretty cool. We can also go ahead and save that. Okay, so it just takes a screenshot, I guess. Well, that's good to know. Uh, charging test. Checks the health of the battery's charging system. Test results include low voltage, no load voltage, and ripple data. Only supports 12 volt lead acid battery tests. The clamps must be connected to the batteries to perform the test. Uh, the clamps must be connected to the battery to perform the test. Connect the red clamp to the battery. Blah, 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 blah. Socket connection is not required for the battery charging and cranking tests. All right, so let's try this one. Turn off all electronics. Start the vehicle. Press, press to confirm to continue. Confirm. Turn off all electronics. Done. There's nothing on in here. Nothing at all. Keep all electronics off. Increase engine speed to 2500 RPMs and hold it. Then press confirm to continue. 2500 RPMs. Testing. Okay, next. Turn on the electronics. Headlights, air condition. Okay, so we're just gonna turn everything on here. Headlights. Full beams. Interior light. Heated seats. Full power. Confirm. All 
right. So, normal charging voltage. No load voltage, 14.8 volts. Load voltage, 13.6 volts. Ripple, 125 millivolts. What is ripple? Is that, is that what it's pulling when nothing is on? Hmm. That sounds like a lot. 125 millivolts. Hmm. Shouldn't it be like 16 millivolts? Maybe I've got a problem here. All right. Anyway, so that's the charging test or the alternator test, I would call it. Let's jump into the battery test. Let's get out of here. All right. So battery test. Let's see here. Regular flooded EN 680. That's what we got. Next. Let's see what it says. It says good battery condition. Please charge. And state of health is 62% which is a little bit weird. It should be more better than that, I hope. But maybe that will show a different number once we get it charged. Uh, state of charge, 62%. Test value, this is the cold crank amps here. So 534 left out of 680, I think it was, yes. Battery voltage, 12.37 volts. We'll get an internal resistance of 5.1 milliohms which I can't tell you if that's good or not, but it sounds pretty low, so it shouldn't be any issues. You don't want that number to be high. You don't want a high internal resistance. All right, let's save on that. All right, so that's all the different tests. How do we know they're accurate? How do we know they're good? I think we should pop the bad Audi battery in here and see what happens. Let's get rid of that. Let's put that here. See that these are kind of the same here. This car is actually for sale if anyone wants to buy it. Give me a, send me an email if you're interested. All right. So let's do a battery test on the bad battery. I'm gonna have to change that. 540. Next. Diminished battery performance. Look at that. So we have 540 amps battery rating. State of health, 12%. That should be tr pretty true. State of charge, 100%. Test value, 187 cold crank amps. Battery voltage, 12.65. Internal resistance, 14.7 milli, milli ohms. Let's save on that. All right. So, well, I guess we don't need to do a charging test because that only has to do with, uh, with, the, uh, with the alternator. Let's do a cranking test instead. Turn off all systems. Turning off all systems. Completely dead, everything's off, all the lights are off. Confirm. Yeah, <laughs> that's obviously pretty, pretty dead. Low cranking voltage, four volts. Cranking time, well, it didn't even start, so. Yeah, that's definitely bad. And that battery was charged 100%, had full voltage, and just couldn't even turn it once. It did crank over the Audi, but that's not a diesel, so it's easy to crank it over. This is much tougher to crank over. Let's see what happens if we try to charge this battery. Let's do a smart charge, why not? Flooded, 540, uh, six volts, no, 12 volts, six amps. Start charging. Gonna do the battery pre-testing. Looks like it's gonna try to charge it. I'm interested to see what happens here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and leave this for, I don't know, 10 minutes. We'll give it till 10 o'clock and see what happens. All right.
Now let's stop charging there. Okay, so it says that set it was at 90%. So should we give it a crank and see if it's better? We've got 13 volts now. Okay, so let's see the, uh, let's do a battery test. See what kind of CCA we get. That's the cold cranking amps. Uh, diminished battery. Test value, 175 amps. So yeah, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't start at this time either. But hey, we can give it a go. Let's see what happens. Nope. Yeah, that's, that pretty much says it. <laughs> it's dead. Should we put the brand new battery in there? Try that too. All right, so this is a brand new battery. This is going in the Audi. It's fully charged. Charged it all night. Let's see here. What does it say? 12.7 volt. Let's double check that. Uh, all right, so let's see here. It's showing 12.7 volts on the top Don. And this one shows 12.77, so good enough for me. So let's do a battery test. Let's start with that. So what do we have on this new battery? Uh, 610, let's go. Let's see what it says. Good battery condition. Battery rating, 610. State of health, 100%. State of charge, 100%. Test value, 611 amps, so it's slightly better. Battery voltage, 12.78, internal system, 4.5. Looks good, looks really good. Uh, let's do a cranking test. Uh, I want you to note that this battery is slightly underpowered for this engine, but since it is a diesel, so it might be a little slow, but uh, confirm. Start the vehicle. Normal cranking voltage, 10.21 volts. Cranking time, 2.8 seconds. So that's slightly slower than the uh, than the stock battery that was in there. That's supposed to be the, but that's because of the higher CCA. So, uh, all right. Well, I think that's a pretty thorough test. I want to show you guys both the good sides and the bad sides. So I'm going to show you guys a bad side right now to this charger. So I'm going to hook it on like you normally would. Just place it on here. And then you go here and you press charge. It's going to eventually start charging. Okay, so now it's charging. And then suddenly you walk past the car. You trip a little bit on this wire. And that gets disconnected for just, you know, half a second. What will happen? This will stop charging. You know, you, you, you fall, you, oh, and then you connect it back again. And maybe you're not looking at this and it's just not going to keep charging. I think that is a slight problem to this, that it doesn't keep on going. Let's compare it to the C-Tech, okay? Just let's start from the beginning. It's unplugged. And plug it in. You want to charge your car? Plug it in. It's automatically it's in the car position. Let's get rid of this. Then you hook it on. See here you got the clamp problem. It's too small, and it's immediately going to start charging. You know you don't need to press any buttons. You don't need to do anything. You can hook this off. Hook it on. It'll start charging. So that's one thing I like if you're going to compare these two. But there's a lot of things I don't like about the C-Tech. One is the low charging amps and these clamps. I really hate them. They're way too small. Why are they so small? They should easily fit over the clamp here. You can fit it over the whole the entire thing. It's awesome. And they're not that much bigger, you know? They're pretty much the same size. They just look a little bit bulkier, but under the hood, it's the same. All right, guys, that's all I have to say about the TB6000 Pro after six months of usage, heavy usage. I even cracked the screen, look at that. 
It's even cracked a little bit there. That's still working, no problem. This is uh, water resistant, by the way. It's IP65, look at that. Anyway, would I recommend this charger? Yes, I really would. It's priced very nice, it's got nice features. They obviously work, so why not? It's six amps. These other competition chargers seem to be around three amps. So yeah, it's a lot of charger for the money. Check the link in the description below and have a good day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Arigats, hi. <sighs> now I gotta bolt all this back. Mm. Let's not install my new battery in here. That would suck.